Welcome class. It's a second video of the series that we are doing Merchant of Venice Act 1 Scene 1. In the previous video we discussed the first three speeches of Scene 1 including the very first speech of the protagonist Antonio. I will very quickly remind you, revise you that what we have done so far and then we shall proceed further. As you know that the scene opens in a state of Venice where the audience finds three friends together discussing. Antonio, the protagonist, Selenio and Salarino, his friends. Antonio complains to his friends that he is feeling very sad. But he does not know the reason of his sadness. Now, no sooner does Antonio complain about his sadness to his friends than his friends jump to the conclusion and start speculating what might be the reason of their friend's sadness. That means Antonio's sadness. Surprisingly, Selenio and Celerino, surprisingly, Selenio and Celerino, both the friends believe that the root cause of Antonio's sadness is his merchandise, his rich investments that he has made into his ships. And since his ships are on the way, that means neither have they reached the destination where they are heading towards nor have they reached home the ships which are coming back. So the ships being in the mid of the ocean are exposed to all sorts of dangers and that is why they believe that their friend Antonio is sad. Now we shall proceed to the next speech. The speech by Salarino and I will tell you that the first four speeches of scene one are extremely important for your examinations. If you have 10 years papers or 20 years papers, you can go and go and see it. That first scene is extremely important, even for boards and also for your home boards. That means for class ninth. Now we shall proceed towards the fourth speech that is of Celerino. What he says, he says, My wind cooling my broth would blow me to an ache when I thought what harm a wind too great might do at sea. I should not see the sandy hourglass run, but I should think of shallows and of flats and see my wealthy Andrew docked in sand, veiling her high top lower than her ribs, to kiss her burial. Salarino appears to be giving a detailed explanation that why he believes that his friend Antonio is sad because of his merchandise. He talks about three things and these three things are actually threads which were highly prevalent in 16th century for any ship. Threat number one is wind. Now you'll be surprised that how can wind be a threat? But Celerino explains that whenever, whenever I blow air into my soup, my broth to make it cool, I get reminded that this is the very same wind or air that I am breathing into the soup that can take the shape of a storm when it comes with a huge intensity. Uh, in fact, yesterday and today, if you keep yourself updated with the national affairs, you must know that what a great disaster Nisarg is making. And similarly, the uh, last week, there was a kind of a storm, I have forgotten the name, that came in West Bengal and cost several lives. So what I mean to say, in fact, what Sarino means to say that wind, 
when it takes the form of a storm it can become extremely dangerous what he is about to say he is making a point that the storm is one of the threats that can destroy a ship and that is why every time every time he breathes into his soup to make it cool every time he gets disturbed every time he get feverish to think that what a storm can do to a ship the second thing that he talks about he talks about the r glass sandy r glass the threat is not the r glass but the threat is actually a sand and i explain you how sand is a threat first let's understand the concept of sandy r glass earlier before the invention of watch or clock how people used to determine time sandy r glass used to be a device there used to be two tubes one of them would be filled with sand or any other substance uh, it's just like this so it was believed that the time taken by the first vessel to be filled with sand or time taken by the next vessel to be emptied by sand is one hour so what selino means to say that whenever i see sandy r glass i get reminded of shallows what shallows are shallows are the places in ocean where the water level is not very deep and we know the bigger the ship is the deeper the water level it requires to sail smoothly shallows and flats are very dangerous places which can make a ship go stuck there and never come back in fact it has happened many a time in the past so what selenio what selrino sorry what selrino means to say he means to say that these places which are shallows and flats they are also a threat and a ship needs to be aware to avoid them because once it comes into it perhaps it won't be able to reach its destination uh and that and that's how the merchant will suffer a very heavy loss let's talk about the third thing that he discusses yes should i go to church and see the holy edifice of a stone and not bethink me straight of dangerous rocks while touching but my gentle vessel sight would scatter all her spices on the stream in robe the roaring water with my silks and in a word but even now worth this and now worth nothing the next thing the last thing the last threat that he talks about he talks about rocks in fact he talks about sea rocks there are several rocks or small mountains which are in the ocean and ship since we are talking about 16th century when ships were not uh equipped the way in which they are now so what used to happen even if by mistake or just a small accident takes place where the ship gets collided with a rock the very next moment the ship gets upturned and all the things all the substances which are there it used to scatter all over the stream so by this the merchant used to suffer a very heavy loss andrew and vessel the terms are used for the ships so what selrino means to say that if any of these things happen to a ship the ship will wreck it will get wrecked and the merchant the owner of the ship is going to suffer a very heavy or huge loss so he has listed three threats which can be proved fatal or extremely disaster to any of the ships in order to prove his point that why he thinks his friend antonio is sad because of his 
merchandise. He further says, in a word, that means in few moments, if the ship survives these threats, the merchant is going to be prosperous, the merchant is going to be successful, the merchant is going to make money. But if the ship fails to survive these threats, then the merchant is going to suffer a heavy loss. So all it takes, it takes moments either to make a merchant or break the merchant. And at last he claims that why are you telling these things to me? Because I am not the merchant. And we all know who the merchant is. The merchant is Antonio. He means to say that Antonio is the merchant who has invested huge amount of wealth into his ships and he has every reason to be sad because his ships they are in the mid of the ocean now antonio antonio breaks his silence after a long time because meanwhile his friends were discussing and he says that no my ventures are not in one bottom trusted what he means to say that look, I am privileged enough to suffer the losses of couple of my ships quite smoothly. My ventures are not in one bottom trusted. That means I do not own only one ship. I have several other ships and I do not trade with only one place. That means country. I trade with many countries. So what he means to say that he is privileged enough to have many ships, he is privileged enough to trade with various countries and that is why even if a couple of ships go wrecked, it won't impact adversely to the financial income of Antonio and that is why Antonio is quite sure that he is not, I mean his merchandise is not the reason for his sadness. After that, Salarino says that then you must have fallen in love and Antonio dismisses this speculation summarily by saying that shame on you, I am not in love either. After that, Salarino says that now it appears to me it's as simple. Earlier you were happy because you had no grounds to be sad. But now you are sad because you have no reasons to be happy. And he compares this state of Antonio with Greek god Janus. Janus was a two-headed god who had two heads and since it has two heads in opposite directions, it was placed, I mean the sculpture of the god placed at the door and that is why it was also called the god of doorstep. So what Salino means to say that nature has created very strange people. Some of the people who remain extremely happy even if they have various reasons to be sad. And similarly some of the people they remain extremely sad when they have no issues at hand to worry. Those people who remain happy even after being various problems they get compared further with parrots and those people who remain extremely sad even after enjoying all sorts of luxuries they get compared with greek philosopher and warrior nestor so what Sereno means to say he presents he comes up with the philosophy of nature that nature has created such a strange people in this world some of them are extremely happy without any reason and some of them are extremely sad without any reason and then three more friends the thing that we were talking about in the first video three more friends Lorenzo Graciano and one of them is Bassanio the best friend of Antonio they enter the scene so aaj ke liye hum abhi itna hi karte hain isko aap dekhiye और फिर अगले वीडियो में हम इसके आगे प्रोसीड करेंगे अगेन आई वुड लाइक टू रिमाइंड यू वन थिंग अगर आपने इसके पहले का नहीं देखा हुआ है तो जाके पीछे देख लीजिए और नेक्स्ट टाइम से अगर आप फर्स्ट टाइम आए हैं अगर आपने फर्स्ट टाइम क्लास देखी है मेरी तो नेक्स्ट टाइम से आई वुड सजेस्ट 
कम विद योर टेक्स्ट ताकि मैं चाहता हूं कि इसी छोटे से वीडियो में आपकी प्रिपरेशन मैं करा दूं जितना में हो जितना हो सकता है आप यहीं पे कर लें आपको इसके अलावा कम से कम पढ़ना पड़ेगा थैंक यू वेरी मच